<laughs> but you got to let go of the weight. You got to let go of some things that dragging you back, dragging you under, dragging you or slowing you down. You got to pick up and run this race to the end. And, and the one thing uh, that, that you got to understand when this scripture was written, you had uh, a nation, Israel, the Jews, the that when they had to make the choice to follow Christ, you got to understand that uh, they were giving up everything that they had uh, uh, learned or everything, the way they've been raised or brought up uh, uh, took us to turn away from Judaism. It was not just uh, a, a, a way of life. It was who they was. Their, their, their connection, everything was wrapped and tied up into that. Uh, and now, now you have somebody who has come on the scene that has told you uh, that he is God manifested in the flesh. Uh, but let me just take this time to let you know, uh, God, you got to be open and understand what the Bible says when my sheep hear my voice or, or my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. See they were looking for Christ uh, to come in a certain way and you know that's how we are we wanted to be big uh, we felt like they, they probably felt like there should have been uh, God a bunch of trumpets blowing and this and that should have happened and everybody should have known the Savior has arrived uh, but we find out he came Meek and lowly. Uh, he was born in a manger. He was born without any fanfare, with, without a whole lot of hoopla. He came on the scene. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, uh, but what, 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 what you have to also understand is he lived a life uh, of God pleasing to God. Uh, well, uh, you got to understand. Even though he was God manifested in the flesh, he still had uh, uh, to deal with this fleshly body and, and the aches and the pains and all the things that come along with walking in the flesh. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, but I'm so glad he didn't lean to his own understanding. Uh, but walking in the mind of God uh, and he gave himself over to a dying world uh, that would talk about him that would spit on him, that would shame him, uh, that would blaspheme that would do all these things uh, and watch this he said forgive them father uh, for they know not what they do uh, don't go oh God hold it to their blame uh, but I'll take all the blame uh, for everything that they're doing. Uh, but in this time, uh, uh, God, they would say that you was following Christ. Uh, you had to be willing to give up even your very life. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, but the one thing about being here in the United States, uh, uh, God, uh, it has primarily been considered, or we have uh, 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 paid service with our lips and our mouth and confess that we are Christians. Uh, uh, God, I don't have time to get on, oh uh, God, the face and the fraud. Uh, but the nation has declared that we are a Christian nation. Uh, I wonder, do you really understand what it means to be a Christian or Christ-like? Uh, uh, if we really understood what oh God being a Christian or Christ life was all about uh, there's a whole lot of things that would not be going on there's a whole lot of things that would not be would not be taking taking place uh, uh, God even when oh God uh, something like a pandemic has come over the nation if we was really Christians and Christ like uh, and we had a leader who was a Christian and was Christ like uh, he would have got over the oh God uh, he would have got on the television on one of his so called broadcasts uh, telling this and that he would have got there and openly Pray before God. Uh, he would have repented, oh God, of the nation for our sins and our transgressions. 
and ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins and to, 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 to heal our land. That's if we was really Christians or Christ's life. But I said that to say this. Uh, there is no real difficulty in declaring or making the declaration that you are a Christian. It's not like if you was in a Muslim nation or a Buddhist nation or, or Islam or, or one of the other uh, 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 religious factions that uh, saying that you are a Christian or that you're following Christ could cost you your very life. Uh, uh, we have uh, 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 the ability to declare, decree, or even denounce that we are Christians or that we are following Christ. Uh, uh, God, but here they had to make a decision. Uh, and it says here in the first verse, wherefore we see that also we are compassed about, about a great cloud of witnesses. There are those who have witnessed, who have who have gone through the fight. And that's why it, it, it's so important that you read your word and uh, find out about those men and women who have gone, who have fought the fight before you. We, we go and we can talk about David and how David was delivered and how David fought for the cause of Christ. Uh, we can go back and uh, fall back on how Moses uh, was brought up out of the court of Egypt. Uh, how God, where he had, had been given the finest education, uh, where he had been given the finest tutoring, uh, but he had to go find or go back and do his first works over again. Uh, he had to find out who he truly was uh, and who his God was. Uh, he had to let go of those phony or fake gods that the Egyptians uh, had put in his life and go back to the one and only true God. We can fall back on Abraham who God made a promise to that he would be the father of many nations. And y'all know my preaching. A promise is still a promise. And I'm going to say this and I'm really trying to move on because I got to hurry up and finish. But uh, when you have taken on Christ and you have uh, uh, repented of your sins, you've been baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. When you have received the infilling of the Holy Ghost, there's some promises that go with it because now you are adopted into a royal priesthood and you become part of the family of Abraham. And, and if I can just get strong enough to believe in what I believe in and, and, and start to use the power and the authority that I have, there shouldn't be any lack or want in my house. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that this house, Harvest Time Apostolic Ministries Church, is paid for. I'm not going to worry about how the mortgage is going to be paid for any longer. Because the Bible says, out of your mouth, huh? life and death, you have some power in your tongue. I was talking with my mother on yesterday, or my niece and nephew, and when she was talking, she looked at uh, my God, my grandson, Raji, little Raj, Raji the third, amen. She looked at him and she said, do you realize that because he's four now that she said, that's the age I was when my mother passed away. And she began to tell us some things about a man, about uh, 
things that had happened, but she said, my mother brought death upon herself because she kept saying, I'm going to die. Power of life and death is in your tongue. I began to tell them about Evangelist Obelia who used to be with us. Her, 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 her uh, uh, cousin, Billy, he said, he said, I'm going to die before my birthday. And the year went on, he was getting real close to his birthday. And, and if I'm not, I can't remember exactly, but I know he died uh, 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 less than a month before his birthday because he spoke that into the atmosphere into the prince of the power of the air grabbed what he said and used it against him because the Bible says the power of life and death is in your tongue uh, so I need somebody to speak life into your situation I know it may not seem easy right now. Huh? Taxes are due on the church. God, you, there's a bill for you, Lord. I need you to pay the taxes on the church. God, the mortgage is due and I don't know where the money's coming from. God, I know you said the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to you. So I'm not going to worry any longer how it's going to be made, but I know it will be made. I got to let go of some weight. Worry is weight. And it says here, lay aside every weight, comma, and the sin. And the sin. And the sin which does so easily beset us. You know, sometimes we keep some folks around us. Uh, oh, watch this. You know, see, there's some things that we don't do any longer. We may not do them, but we haven't fully let them go. Yeah. Because we keep some folks around us that can remind us of the fun that we used to have doing the things that we used to do and we have not really let them go and we keep folks around that can remind us of remember when we did such and such such and such and when this and that and the other thing and you go back in your mind to the fun y'all was having and doing what you do let go of the way and the sin. You know, I, I, I look and I, again, and I'm going to hurry up and I'm almost finished, but uh, I had to examine myself because there were some things that I was holding on to uh, when things got rough in, even in my marriage. There was things going on. And, uh, unfortunately, my marriage didn't work out. Uh, the first thing that the devil will try to do is take you back to a counter way of thinking or old way of thinking that you go back to doing the old things. And so the devil has always tried to torment me with the fact that I was going to be alone, that I, the fact that I was going to uh, uh, end up broke and lonely and nobody was going to be around me. And, and that's how he he, he, or he uh, uh, persuaded me to go back to doing some things that I had let go of. He, uh, I went back, and I, this is a long time ago, I'm delivered from it, but he, he, I would go back to selling dope. I would back, go back to, 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 to pimping and, and, and putting myself in a vow surroundings or situation because I knew that monies was going to come with the surrounding and I thought that the money was what was going to make me happy. Uh, but I realized something because there was a time when I had plenty of money uh, but I wasn't happy uh, because there were certain things still going on and, and, and I thought being around all these women and, and, and sleeping with a different woman every night I thought that 
was going to make me happy, but it wasn't making me happy. I was waking up lonely, oh God. I was waking up disgusted with myself. I was waking up, amen, feeling worse than when I went in. I got to let go of some weight, amen. And even though I thought I had met somebody, oh God, and I'm not saying that they're not, oh God, I haven't, or, or that God won't fix some things, but I thought I had met somebody that 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 that, that uh, uh, I could believe that would believe in me and I could believe in them and that we could grow and, and, and go forward together amen and uh, somehow it all fell apart and the first thing the devil would try to do is to drag me back into an old way of thinking where now just let's get the party started uh, but he that the son has set free uh, is free indeed. Uh, I let go of the old man. Uh, I let go of the old way of thinking. Uh, I'm not going to go back and lie in the mud. Uh, I'm not going to wallow in the slop with the pigs. Uh, I'm going to keep myself clean. Uh, and I thank God that he keeps me in his word. Uh, I thank God uh, that even though I may not understand why my relationship and things went, went haywire, uh, why things were broken up, I thought, amen, I had found, oh God, uh, and I was going to go, oh God, happily ever after. It didn't quite work that way. Uh, but I went back to the author and the finisher of my faith. Uh, and I said, Lord, make me over again. Uh, maybe it's me, God. Uh, maybe it was my fault. Uh, maybe there's some things in me that shouldn't be. Put me on the potter's wheel. Uh, spin me around, Lord. Uh, remove the flaws out of me. Let go of the way. Huh. I'm so glad that I, I learned how to let go of the way. I told you the devil tries his best to get you uh, to give up. He tries his best to get you to give up in the middle of the race or towards the end of the race. <laughs> oh God, but then, like I said, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. The devil of God uh, 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 doesn't, most of the time, doesn't come at the beginning of the race because uh, at the beginning of the race, uh, uh, you're strong, you're refreshed in the beginning of the race. You're strong, you're ready to go. Uh, uh, have you had, those of you uh, runners, have you ever ran like the LA Marathon and I told you my story about the LA Marathon, but he, uh, you come out and you think, well, I'm gonna finish with the top of the top, and you begin, you start off running probably a little faster than you should, uh, but you're fresh, you're strong. Uh, you came out there trying that you're gonna try to prove something. Uh, uh, God, you know, you know, you look at all of them and you say, the Kenyans are not gonna win today. Uh, I'm gonna be in the top, and you come out strong running, and then you find out uh, uh, you might be able to keep a pretty good pace uh, about the six mile mark or the five mile mark or the four mile mark uh, and probably about the three mile mark. Uh, you realize I got to slow up a little bit. Uh, I'm running a little bit harder than I should. Uh, and if I keep up at this pace uh, I won't make it to the end. Uh, because when you realize that a marathon is over 20 miles uh, and you've got to have a little something in the tank uh, when you get down the back stretch, uh, when you get down, when you can see, oh God, the finish line. Uh, but it seems like when the finish line comes into view, uh, that's when the race really gets real. Uh, that's when it gets harder to run. Uh, that's when you want to quit and want to give up. Uh, but you're so close to the end of the race. The other part is 
What you have to learn that there's some historical ramifications in how you run this race and what you allow in your proximity. I'm who I am because of who my grandfather was. He was a prayer. He was an intercessor. He raised his children to do the same. And then my father and mother were saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Prayer warriors. And so my grandfather prayed, my grandmother prayed, my mother prayed, my father prayed. And God filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I'm praying God has filled my children and restored my children. And even, oh God, Naya, who hasn't received the Holy Ghost, I decree and declare the Holy Ghost for her in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says salvation was unto me, my children, and my children's children. Uh, in fact, my grandson, Raji the uh, third, uh, God, he lets me know every time he sees me, uh, Big Papa, I have my mic. Uh, see, because he came here and he saw me praying uh, and he saw me preaching uh, and he said, I want to do it like Big Papa. Uh, and so now he'll grab his mic uh, and he may not even understand everything he said. He's saying it or why he's saying it. Uh, but he'll begin to say hallelujah uh, and he'll begin to say thank you Jesus uh, and he'll begin to praise God in his place in what he understands to do. Uh, and I believe that God is pro God, uh, building him up in his spirit. Uh, so that when he gets a little further down in the race, uh, he won't quit, he won't give up. Uh, but the Holy Ghost is going to come inside of him. Uh, it's going to take over. Uh, he'll speak in unknown tongues. Uh, as the Spirit of God gives earth, uh, he'll be filled the gift of the Holy Ghost and they all begin to keep on keeping on even though he started at, he started at a young age he's going to keep on keeping on uh, he's going to keep on praising God. Uh, he's going to keep on saying hallelujah. Uh, he's going to keep on saying thank you Jesus. Uh, he's going to keep on trying to take a text uh, like Big Papa. Uh, he's going to keep on preaching the word of God. Uh, because there's a, oh God, there's some historical ramifications uh, in where we're at and what we're doing. Uh, and that's why I got to give God the praise. Let it go and set it aside every way that does so easily with sense. Thank God for the cloud of witnesses. And then I can go back through the word of God and I can find, amen, uh, some stories to help me through where I'm at. <laughs> I'm so glad that God that, that God has put some people in my path. Now God that, 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 that can pray me through. I thank God for the Bishop Douglas. Hallelujah, who prayed me through. I thank God for the elder uh, 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 Todd, amen, uh, 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 for him calling me and, and, when, and, and me praying with him and him praying with me and me praying for him and him praying for me. I'm pushing through because I can't quit. I can't stop in the middle of the race because there's some folks waiting to see me. There's some cheerleaders at the finish line waiting to see me cross over. I just got to change my way of thought. I got to change my way of thinking. That's why in the Philippians, the second chapter and the fifth verse it said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I got to change the way I think. I can't give up. I can't quit. Uh, 
Because uh, even though he took the he was being shagged, uh, even though he was being beaten, uh, even though they put a crown of thorns on his head, uh, even though they pierced his hand and his feet, uh, he said, I'm not doing it uh, because of oh God, uh, or I'm doing it for them uh, because I want to see them saved. Uh, I want to see them delivered. Uh, I want to see them to be an overcome. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You can't be ashamed of giving your testimony. You can't worry about how many folks get tired of you talking about how good God has been to you in your life. God gave me my life back. And there's folks that might be tired of hearing it, but I thank God that he did it. Was knocked out. Down the devil thought for the cap. Somewhere on Imperial. Hit on my motorcycle. Left for dead. But God said not so. It ain't over. I gotta be willing to tell somebody of his goodness. I gotta tell the story. To those so that they know that my God is a deliverer. Huh. I got to realize something. That my faith came with a price. I had to go through something. But I got to be willing to tell folks what I go through. Hebrews, the, I, I need you to understand this is how you make it over. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. In the sixth verse, it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Let me just back up. Without faith, anything you're trying to do is impossible. It's impossible. Because I don't believe. I don't have, I, I, I don't trust. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God watch this, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Verse 7 says, by faith Noah being warned of God of the things not seen. Stop worrying about what you can see. I'm going to call some things out even though don't nobody see it and I'm going to watch God manifest it. He said, he said, uh, 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 God of the things not seen uh, as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to, uh, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which, oh God, he commanded the world he could, I'm sorry, to the art by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. I got to have faith. 